Hello there, YouTube. Welcome to a 34 degree Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, the 20th of December. Man, tomorrow's the first day of winter already. But that is the shortest day of the year. Although we've already reached several days ago, actually over a week ago, the shortest sunset. But the difference is being made up in the in the mornings. But um, yeah, we've already gained, what, four or five minutes of sunset of daylight it's funny how it all twists around but overall today or tomorrow will be the shortest day but <sighs> kind of foggy this morning i think that is just blue skies up there as far as i can tell but the fog's so thick you hear the gutters running that's crazy everything's wet doesn't matter whether it's covered or not but uh anyway welcome to hump day yo come on along 42 and it looks like the sun is trying to lift yeah it's trying to burn off i think the there's fog. A, a nice day to be had once the fog lifts and goes away yeah, hopefully it does here of the fog lifting instead of home yeah it doesn't like to leave home that was crazy last sunday it just never yeah. never lifted morning to night the fog was there. just got a click over freezing Mm -hmm. That was not a good day. No, that was very damp yeah. and wet and cold. Yeah, even the dogs didn't like it. Mm -mm. Well, Mama, we made it to hump up. day. We did. Let's go in here and bust it out. All right. All right. Have a wonderful day. You too. All right. Love you. See you. Bye. I love you. Bye. <laughs> bye bye now. Bye. So you guys know I am hugely not a fan of this style filter, but these dudes in Greece are throwing out a pretty uh, pretty convincing deal. They And I was looking at it with a jeweler's loop, and it's definitely not the same stuff. You look at it through the light, you don't see uh, millions of little holes where stuff can get through. So uh, this is from, from DNA. And, uh, yeah, I mean, top notch. Look how nice and even the pleating is, except for the seam there, but they always have that, but... I've seen some crazy looking setups. So they want you using their cleaner and oil. And I should have ordered it at the same time because it's like $20 for the kit. Well, it's $20 in shipping. But, I mean, it'd be a long time before I need to clean it. So I ordered some more of these uh, LEDs. I opened this one right quick because, uh, gee, I had a rough ride. And I tested it. Got a Honda battery over there. I got a little test thing. Ooh, that thing's bright. This is 300 lumens brighter than the one I put in the 350. And, um, yeah, raving reviews, like a lot of reviews. So I got two of those. There's another one that's in another package that hasn't arrived yet, but pretty cool. And this, when you add this intake, they consider that a stage two at that point. That's their terminology. That's going with it so i have leds on the on all the himalayans and um that the only thing that kind of concerns me is you remember when i put the because i got a stage one air filter kit for like 10 or 20 dollars more than what the stock air filter was i said get it the service manager was over at the what used to be our local holiday shop but they're gone now but um they combined and moved to a much bigger place. But anyway, um, it had so much intake noise that I had to end up putting slip-on exhaust on it because the intake was so loud on that Iron 883. The, wah, you know, I tried by drilling larger holes in the stock mufflers, and yeah, that didn't work. It sounded like crap. My tuner had a fit trying to figure that out. So I ended up buying those Rush slip-ons, and it's been perfect ever since. But I'm afraid that intake noise is going to outweigh the exhaust noise. That really irritates me. That that sound of just too much intake noise. But we'll see. But I wish I'd have ordered that daggum cleaning kit at the same time. Hmm. Yeah, I blew it. Plus, it took forever to get here. It showed it was in the United States. It showed it was in Ohio somewhere. Nope. Came directly from Greece. From the manufacturer. But cool. LEDs. This one wasn't crushed at all. I should probably pull it out and check it anyway, huh? But, um, yeah, nice. I got some stuff to tinker with when we get home tonight. 
Look at Mount Hood right there. Is that beautiful or what? I'll take more than a picture. It's a moving picture. I don't know what these guys are coming back and forth through here with them forklifts like crazy people. Must be moving stuff around. So we made it home safe and sound somehow in that crazy fog. But um, first thing we're going to do. Oh, there's a clip that got cut when I, when suddenly I have this air filter out. There was a part where I opened the box, pulled it out, everything's still in the bags. And I was talking about the light bulbs only had two and there's a third one coming. Um, yeah, I, I lost the clip. I apologize for that. So if it just seems like I jumped into talking about this filter because I jumped in talking about this filter. But um, put that in there. And then we're going to slap some um, LEDs in these three. These um, these actually got much higher review of what uh, of the other ones readily available on Amazon. The air filter, um, you can get it from Amazon. Hitchcock's, very easy to find. And um, Scan Tool is from Hitchcock's as well, is where I got that. So um, I don't know why I didn't order it from Hitchcock's. I should have, but I had it a long time ago. But it looked like Amazon was right here in the States, and it would be here quick, and it took forever. Because I ordered all this stuff at the same time. And, uh, yeah, you can see that was the last thing that showed up. Anyway, let's, uh, let's realize I don't have the keys. So uh, let me go grab the keys. And uh, I need that to open up the airbox. It's the simplest thing in the world to put in. But uh, here we go. So there's the air filter removed. There's the stock air filter. And the DNA filter. So... And if you look at this thing really, really, really close with a bright light through it, you can make out the most microscopic little holes. I had another one there at the shop from Brand X. And, uh, yeah, it looked like Swiss cheese. So this one's not 100% going to catch everything. But, you know, the oils they use and some other things, it's it should be... Should be fine. Nothing gets through these. If you don't change them, they'll build up enough uh, resistance that it'll start leaking past the seal. These you can you can wash, but uh, I'm very very much so against this these type of filters from the past. There's several people that make them. One of them, you know, has been around forever. But uh, yeah, they're they're. Spinning up a, a pretty good yarn on this thing, and and what I've seen so far, um, everything's been great. But I will very closely check, you know, anything getting past that filter, which compared to another brand, I can tell you right now, it's it's going to be probably at least ninety five percent better. But anyway, besides all that, this is the sock intake on the air box. See how it all necks down, and it goes into actually a smaller hole than what the uh, um, air filter opening is. You see there's the two, two intakes. This is a reduced hole. And what this one does is you have none of that. That's going to sit on there, and it's just going to go straight down the gullet. The air is just going to go straight into the, into the filter. When it's all lined up. So that'll all sit there and it's going to whoop. Now, what I'm going to do initially is uh, outside of this thing, there's like a document holder that sits out here. You can put your manual and stuff like that in there. I'm going to leave that on because uh, you know, the air is still, the, the air box is going to be closed. So the air is still having, you know, to come through here. There's no opening around this so see where my fingers are the air has to come up through there so it's coming up and going in there so having this that's um, open at the bottom the air is still going to be coming from the same place my hopes are is that uh, 
this will help reduce some of the intake snorkely sound. So you obviously go in backwards with the filter. You find your little home back there, and she sits, and then you line up your plate, the DNA plate in there, and put the three screws that you take out for the stock plate, and put this in. So let me do that right quick. So well, that's it, in a nutshell. There's the filter. And I stagger this thing as you're going on, because you know initially that filter's it's kind of kind of thick and it needs to find its home back there because it's pushing against a couple of pins back there. But don't do one; just go tap, 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 and just slowly go around till it gets in. Again, I want to be perfectly clear: leaving this document cover on here is not limiting anything because this this cover is sealing the box off. You're not pulling any outside air. The air has to come up through here to make it into there. You're not gaining anything by letting it rattle around in a cover before it goes up. So putting the document holder back on, I can do this one hand, here we go. It's kind of got a lip up there and it's got a rubber grommet that it pops in, sort of, yeah. Do I need to lube it, maybe? Yeah, she's being stubborn. So, my thinking is keeping it in that nice flow that it's meant to do. Of course, you're getting a little air leak at the top here. But again, there's nothing. It's not pulling any air from this area. So that's essentially shut off. It's going to get some air that's leaking from behind because the cover is kind of hollow and spots underneath there. No, it's got to come. It's coming through that spot. So don't worry about leaving your document cover holder, I mean, you keep calling a cover, on there. You're not restricting anything. I've seen several people flop their door open. They see an open filter and this is gone. You're not gaining absolutely anything. It still has to come from behind and come up to the filter. So, there you are. Let me, uh, I'll put a little lube on that little nipple there so it pops in nice and easy. All right, so that's that for that. I need to let it run. I usually let them go for 15 minutes. And um, I won't do that until I can go for a ride. I'll just let it run and it'll it'll uh, find its home with that new air filter in there because it does breathe a lot better. And um, I'll take it for a rip and uh, go from there. See how she works out. Ah, dang. So that one's done. My mirror's aren't going to be here until February 5th. Holy moly. And the um, the springs will be here like the 16th of January. And what was the other thing? I don't recall right off the top of my head. Huh, I don't remember. It will be here on the 26th of January. So it's like a, yeah, over a month before I get that stuff done. I can spend a tremendous amount more on those mirrors, like a crazy amount more, and uh, order them elsewhere, but I can wait. It's wintertime. I can definitely wait. So let's get some headlights put in, headlight bulbs put in these things. I almost feel embarrassed to even explain to you how to put this thing on. Like this one, it's just two bolts that would hold the headlight into the bucket, and it's got a hanger at the top. Lift up, come off. Take the boot off. The bottom, pull the little retaining springs out, and reach in and grab your little H4 bowl, and there you go. Now you just simply put the LED one in. I always put just a little, I just wetten the terminals with some dielectric grease. Put it back together and go. Just simple as that. Well, there we go. LEDs all around. I'm not going to start that one to show you that. But they're heck of bright. There is a, there's one little kicker with the, um, with the Himalayans is that, uh, they, uh, the back of the bulb, you know, from the back where the terminal is at the back, if you measure the halogen in this, this is a different brand. I didn't pay attention to measurements on these as much as I did on that one. But it's seven and a half millimeters longer when you have the uh, the 
terminal plugged in to the back of the light, it's seven and a half millimeters longer. Well, there's not enough room in the back of the headlight, so they bump. So I have to kind of press them on to get the screws in. More so on mine than Kelly's. Kelly's didn't didn't put up much of a fight at all, but but mine did. So, you know, I wonder if over time, if that stress, because the back of the headlight bucket is flat. There's not a lot of room in there in these headlight buckets at all in these Himalayans. There's oh, pfft. there's tons of room in in the in the GT. This is a regular metal. You can see it's deep. It goes all the way back there. It's just a regular metal headlight bucket. These are flat, and the only thing in there is the you know the little marker light or running light, whatever they call those things. We don't use them here, even though they're on. But anyway, um, love the way they look. I'm just a little concerned, especially with mine. What kind of stress? Because that's putting a lot of stress on these screws and this bucket. It's plastic. So, I don't know. I'll let it sit there for a while, day or two, and I'll come back out here and uh, and uh, take the take it back out and just see, you know, if it's, like, pushed it. Because you can take your finger and you kind of push on the back of it so the plastic at the back seems kind of soft. And for whatever reason, Kelly's, I think, is softer and gave way a little bit better. Yeah, there's the most framework right back there, too. Yeah. Yeah, well, they've got the same amount of, yeah, but whatever. There we are. Hot day. LEDs all around. <laughs> they are brighter, and I, I like that. Nothing else. I like that more than anything. And, um, you know, going down the highway, people see you better in that, that very bright white light. But there we are. We'll get out in the dark at some point and, uh, when it's not wet and foggy and see what it looks like going down the road. But on that, I'm going to bail out and get with the mama and we'll do a goodbye. Alrighty. Well, hello there, YouTube. Still completely fogged out here. The bench we're sitting on is wet. Everything, Everything is wet. wet. Even the CRV is just soaking wet like it's been sitting out in the rain. It's in the carport. Or under a carport. Yeah. <laughs> in it, on it, and whatever. But, uh, yeah, beautiful in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And it was nice coming home until, I don't know, went past, the, just past the fairgrounds, the Clark County Fairgrounds heading north, coming this way. All of a sudden, heavy fog warnings, and it was just socked in all yeah. the way home. An accident. Yeah. It took forever to get home. Yeah, crazy. Fog everywhere. Then the people using the Waze app, who, if you're using the app, you can see 75 people before you have, have clicked fog warning. Why do you add another fog warning? Yes. We can all see the fog. Mm -hmm. You don't have to keep putting your input on top of everybody else's input. The whole, whole, whole way home. Warning. Fog reported ahead. Warning. Fog. It's like, oh my God. You need if to I could, up. they need to have a flashing light on top of the car that's, that's going along and just keeps tagging that thing. So you can go there and knock them off. <laughs> but anyway, the quiet day at work. Fun tinkering with the old oil in fields and all that kind of good stuff. That's yes. always fun. Lots of fun. Tinkering with your own stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's always way more fun. But I think on that, on this miserable cold, it's not really that cold, but it's no, just... it's not bad. The humid, the cold with the humidity is just like sinking in. Everything's like, feels sticky and Yucky. damp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. Alrighty, well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And you guys have an amazing Thursday or Friday. Heck yeah. All right. We see you in the morning. We'll see you then. <laughs> Thanks for watching now. Bye-bye.